Welcome to our first show of the Visual Arts Initiative presented by Vibrance. I'm your host, Spriha, and today I'll be chatting with Eileen Green, a mixed media artist and the executive director of West Windsor Arts Council in New Jersey. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Spriha. Thanks for having me. Of course, I'm so happy that you could join us and share your story with us. I wanted to begin by asking you, uh, you know, a simple question, which I guess everybody wonders that, you know, did you always know that you wanted to be an artist or is that something you discovered along the way? Well, you know, I was always interested in the arts. I was always drawing. I was a prolific um, drawer as a child, filling notebooks with my observations of nature and the world around me, um, taking classes all through high school. But I never uh, realized that I actually wanted to focus on the arts as a career until I got to Rutgers University and I took an art class with Rafael Ortiz who really opened my eyes to the possibilities and the breadth of, of what was there for me in the arts. So from that time on, I knew that that was my path. That's awesome. I think college is such a difficult time. You're always confused. You don't know, you know what you really want to do. And if you kind of found your voice there, that's, that's amazing. And you followed it through. So tell me something, what inspires you? I mean, your work I know is a mix of so many different things and materials being a mixed media artist, so can you tell us some more? Yeah, for me, the ideas come first and then the medium comes, follows from that. Um, I love to work in all different types of, of art forms. I always say if, if it's art, I love it and I'll try it and, and you know, do it. Mm -hmm. um, so it starts from, you know, what is it that I'm seeking to express? Mm -hmm. And the things that inspire me, you know, are observations of the world around me, you know, my perspective as a woman in our culture mm -hmm. and, um, and how we define ourselves through um, various means, whether that's, you know, our, um, our dress, you know, or our interactions mm -hmm. um, and the way that um, there's so much continuity, you know, over time, um, there are kind of signals of time that help you mark the passing of time. Mm -hmm. But in essence, um, we we're so cyclical in nature. So those are some of the kind of major themes that you'll see expressed in my work in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, but they're the essence of, of what I'm exploring through my art. Mm -hmm. So I see you've done a few pieces in metal and, you know, you're into iron pour. So can you show us a piece? Uh, you know, I know you have a small one with you. So can you show that? To I us? do. Yes, okay. sure. So How you brought about making that. So this, uh, I'll show you, this is an iron pillow that I've made. Beautiful. And um, you can see that it uh, has a texture of crochet over the top. Yeah. And so um, I began by modeling it in wax and then uh, made a mold. And this was cast during a live iron pour that I participated in. So, um, you know, I love the materiality um, and, and the, the process of working in sculpture, it's so different, you know, so intense and so collaborative. Um, you really have to work with a group of people, um, you know, and there are many wonderful sculptors in our community who, um, through the Johnson Atelier, who have been able to meet over time and who I've learned from. Um, and so this piece, you know, for me, the, the pillow, again, you know, I talked about how we express ourselves and it's really a metaphor for the body. Um, and um, the crochet is a very feminine um, endeavor considered that way. And so by, you know, putting the two together and then realizing it in iron and that very kind of, you yeah, know, traditionally like, masculine. Yeah, it's like delicate and masculine all together. And it's like really strong, yet really light. So it, that's a really beautiful balance. And so how do you get the crochet on the, the, the pillow? Is it something that you laid over or? When it's in the wax stage, um, I work with actual crochet and dip the crochet in wax as well. And because it's an organic material, when you're making the mold around it, it gets burned out and it leaves it that impression on the inside of the mold. Oh. So that when the metal goes in, you get that. And that kind of fills it in. Oh, that's, mm -hmm. that's beautiful. Yeah. And what about the other paintings? I see there's one, uh, you know, that you shared with us called Backbend. What inspired the, that amazing pose? <laughs> 
<laughs> so, you know, again, it's this notion of, of femininity and what's expected of the different genders um, and how, you know, it's really a personal expression of how I feel sometimes um, juggling everything and doing a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. And um, it's sort of a challenge to say, yes, I'm, I'm going to do it. You know, um, it's, it's a way of um, kind of encouraging myself to keep going and to, um, to put it out there and to just make it happen. Mm -hmm. And even your collages, they, I love the use of color. Like they're so subtle yet they're there. So they have so much to say. Is that something that's uh, inspired by your culture, your background, or just your fascination with colors? Oh, absolutely. I mean, my, my mother is born and raised in Turkey. And um, so the textiles and the color um, of you know the textiles especially in turkey the the um ceramic work mm -hmm. is all very influential over me um you know she and my grandmother were both um, what i call domestic goddesses you know they um any kind of handicraft you know they did knitting and sewing and crocheting and basketry and oh, so wow. those textures you know definitely you know inform my work mm -hmm. um but i also you know i grew up here in the States and I've spent a lot of time, you know, in Trenton, New Jersey and made friends with um, graffiti artists. And so the way that, you know, graffiti is layered and there's this bright color and a lot of different texture happening and it's got these sort of hidden messages inside of it. That's very inspiring for me too. Mm -hmm. So with my works, like the one you see over my shoulder here, you know, there's this combination which is what makes who I am you know coming from this other tradition but growing up in and being um, ex, you know experiencing a very different lifestyle yeah it's almost marrying two worlds together through your art which is uh, you know beautiful and you know talking about many roles I mean I find it intriguing Eileen I don't know how you do it I mean you have <laughs> so many roles to play and how do you manage it? I mean, being an artist, being a mom, you know, and running a nonprofit is not easy. And of course, there's so many other parts that I haven't even mentioned. You know, being an artist, uh, you know, in a community, which I know means a lot to you. Uh, and there's so many projects that you've undertaken you know, to share your love of art and community. Can you tell us some more about that? Yeah, um, you know, it's it's who I am and what I do. I love to be a part of the community and um, to take care of my family. You know, in a way, it's almost a different kind of self-care um, where it, um, I get a lot out of being there for others mm -hmm. um, and um, helping to create community and, and um, support creative community. Um, the artists who are part of our, our network are um, so special and I'm always in awe of, of what they do. And so it's really, it's really kind of a joy to me to be able to support that as I go on my own journey as well. And it inspires me, you know, to keep going with, with what I do. Um, so, you know, it's, um, I don't know what to say other than I just have to do it. <laughs> No, but I mean, I just think that, you know, it's, in, you know, you are an artist at the end of the day. And I know that you run the Westminster Arts Council so efficiently. And you're always putting up and encouraging other artists to share their work. But I don't think I've ever seen your work up there unless it's for the fundraiser. So yeah. I think how, how tough is it to kind of, you know, tell yourself and have that maturity saying, I am an artist, but this space is not for me only. Mm -hmm. Rather, I don't use it at all. I put my, you know, art somewhere else. It's for all the other artists in the community or outside community. I mean, that's really thinking bigger than yourself, you know? Absolutely. And, um, so I think that comes through really positively at the West Windsor. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, no, my, my mission as the director of the Art Center is to create a world which is more appreciative and conducive to the arts and to artists. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, by creating, I'm creating the world I'd love to see, you know, so, um, yeah, I, I, it's hard for me as an individual, um, to, um, kind of, you know, have to put my art on the back burner at times, but, um, I, I am in service to this bigger goal, you know, and it is important to keep the two separate because it's not about me. It's not for my benefit, the work that I do for the art center. Um, and it can't yeah, be. Yeah. 
So it is a very important, actually, to keep it separate. That you have been a part of that's also been a big contribution, right? Sorry, say it again. The the Trenton art puzzle. Oh yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a great project. I mean, that was a, that was an instance where um, I was able to work with other community organizations, um, and um, and with my partner Bruce Lindsay, we got a grant from the I Am Trenton Foundation to do some community art projects in Trenton, which was a wonderful experience um, where we um, created these. Um, art puzzles, sort of like a, a blank with the outline of Trenton and then set up paint events um, throughout throughout the summer and the fall and eventually was able to exhibit the work of people from all over Trenton expressing their experiences and views and feelings about Trenton and being a part of that community. So um, yeah, that was an instance where in my own time, I was able to create a project, you know, to give back. Um, so. I do it, yeah, on the clock and off the clock. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and tell us more about uh, how the pandemic has affected you as an artist, as well as the West Windsor Arts Council. You know, it's been tough times for everybody, but, you know, how are you all coping with this? Yeah, well, it, you know, it has been difficult for the Arts Council. Um, you know, we are such a, um, a community, physical space oriented place, you know, having classes and events at the art center and welcoming people regularly there. Um, you know, it's, it's was really devastating not to have that. And it has been. Um, and, you know, as far as, um, you know, we just had to find new ways to reach out and connect with people. Um, but, you know, the there is a financial impact um, that that we feel Mm -hmm. and we probably will feel for a few years to come. Mm -hmm. But um, we're, you know, the great thing about being a small young organization is that you could be nimble and you can, you know, find different ways of doing things. So that's what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. And um, same, same with me personally, you know, uh, I, in the beginning, it was very like kind of contemplative and Mm -hmm. figuring out, you know, um, I was really focused on the art center and spent a lot of my time making sure that uh, working with the board very closely and making sure that we could get through it. Mm-hmm. And then once we were feeling on more stable ground, you know, I've been able to focus more on myself as well and getting ready for an art show coming up, actually. Oh, that's awesome. So. Congratulations on that. And do tell us, uh, you know, about the classes that the West Windsor Arts Council is offering right now so that, you know, our listeners and viewers can actually reach out and help because uh, I think it's really important. Um, I think art is a, it has a huge role to play, especially during these times, you know, it's a healing tool. So can you share with us? What yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we have classes for both children and adults. And um, I think what's unique about our online classes is how personal and interactive they are. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's not just sitting and watching a video um, and then, you know, you have to rewind if you don't get it. This is, you know, our teaching artists who are, you know, some of the best in the field. Um, meeting with the students online and helping them and then also having staff there to help if there are you know sometimes the technical stuff can get in the way so we've done whatever we can to try to make that part easy and then allow people to continue to yeah have these kind of growing experiences and processing experiences through the arts Mm-hmm. So I think it's very important, and we've we've seen that over and over again, and heard from our students who um, have participated how much it means to them. So we're really happy to keep providing classes in all different media, you know, um, so that students can can have that experience even in these times. Yeah, I know I've taken classes at you know the council, and I love them. I love the teachers. I love the staff. It's a very homely atmosphere. So yeah, I mean, I'm sure it'll be. It'll be a little different, of course, virtually, but I still think the teachers are awesome and the classes would be, you know, really great. So today, um, Eileen is going to share with us, right, two workshops. You want to talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm excited to share a couple of workshops with you here on this platform. Um, The first is with Katie Truck, who is an amazing artist and teacher who... um, works with us quite a lot with our youth classes. And in this uh, class, she does a drawing lesson and you really get a sense for her exuberance and the way that she's able to communicate so effectively um, and really 
make it so that anybody can can draw mm -hmm. and then the other yeah <laughs> that's great and then the other class um is with eleni litt and she teaches um adults primarily and she has a weekly class called a doodling meetup and they so they meet on sundays and so this is um a, a, an example of the type of workshop she would lead, you know, that she does on a regular basis. And it's really um, such a wonderful way to have the experience of making art without a lot of pressure about what, you know, the outcome has to be. It's very process oriented and very free and free of judgment. Um, so it's a wonderful way to, to work and to kind of get the creative juices going, you know, that could potentially lead to other things. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Eileen, for joining us today. Hi, everybody. I'm Katie. I thought it'd be fun that we would draw a unicorn today. You don't like unicorns? That's okay. Unicorns are just magical horses. So draw a magical horse. Are you ready? Today you're going to need a pencil and an eraser. I almost couldn't find mine there. And then anything that you want to, to color it in, whether it's crayons or markers or colored pencils, we're just going to do the drawing. And then I'm going to let you color it in the way you want. Can you see my screen? Can you see my hands? I hope so, because you'll see there, there's my unicorn. Are you ready? We're going to take it down. Remember, your eraser is going to be really important. Draw lightly. You want to draw lightly at first because we're going to do some erasing. Okay? First thing I'm going to do is make a circle. Oh, oh, my circle is kind of oval. There's my circle. Do you see it? Circle. So you want to make a circle. Can you see my circle? Good. Now I'm going to draw a straight line from the top of my circle. Straight, 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 straight line. Can you see it? straight line and a circle. It's kind of like it's wearing a beret on the side of its head. Then I'm going to do another circle right there, right at the end of that. But I want to make it a little bit smaller, everybody, just a little bit smaller. Okay, so I have a big circle and a little circle, and I can almost fit my finger in between the two. So you want a little space. Don't let them don't let them smooch. No smooching circles today. No sm smooching circles. Now we're going to take this one circle in the front and make it into our face. See? Our face. So what we need to do is angle it down a little bit. So right on the edge of that circle, see how it bends down? We want it to bend down too. Like that. Then we're going to pull it in like and make a V. V. Can you see my V? That's going to be the inside of my mouth. Yay! Smile! Can you see my smile? Pink. Now I need a lower lip because when you're in profile, you have a lower lip. So make sure you have a lip. So all I'm going to do is kind of have it go in a little bit, in a little bit. See, a little bit. See how it's like a V and it comes down? And then I'm going to have it come around, right around. There we go. Now I can erase the, my inside circles because I don't need them anymore. Say bye bye, circles. They've done their job. I sure hope that you press lightly so that no one ever knows our circle secrets. Okay, I'm gonna leave the back there just so that you can, that's gonna be kind of like the back of my head. So I'm gonna leave it there, okay? So now, what I'm going to do, da, 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 I wanna add ears, and ears are just triangles. So we're gonna do one, two, three triangles, but look at this one over here, do you see it? I'll bring it closer to the camera. See how it's, this is on the other side of the head? So you're not gonna see the inside of the ear. When you only see half of the face like this, it's called a profile. So we're not going to see both our eyes because if you're looking at me in profile, you only see one. So we're only going to draw one eye, but we're going to draw both ears. Watch this. The ear that's closest to me is going to be bigger. Triangle or just an upside down B. If you want to do a triangle all the way, you can. But I like to do just a B. And then I'm going to do the inside of B. Meow, meow. There you go. And then I'm going to do the other side, which is kind of close to the other one. So it almost looks like an M. Doesn't it look very Emmy? Mighty! And if you want to make this one a little bit smaller, you can. I made it almost the same size just because I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. All right, now I'm going to do another upside down V. And guess what this is going to be? This is going to be my horn. 
And we want that V to come down into our face a little bit. You don't want it just hovering on the edge. See how this line? And this line is different on the bottom. We need to make it a little bit. And we also need to round it. So just make sure it's a little bit lower. So I have to go in and erase that line. I also have to erase that line if I haven't done so already. Because, you know, there's no lines in there. We don't want lines in there. No, thank you. Okay. So now I have my M's. Oh, so many triangles. Yes. Now we have to do the back of our head. The back of our head is just following that old line that I have. And then we want it to be neck. Look how this is. Oh, horses have long, fabulous necks. So we want to make sure that this one comes down. Long and fabulous. And then the other side. The other side, see how it kind of comes in a little bit? Ah, but Katie, I don't know where to start. Okay, let's do the bottom of our face then. Have this one come up a little bit. And remember that other, that part of the circle that we had right here? You still kind of see it a little bit. We're gonna just have this kind of come up a little bit and meet. Now, you can have it as straight as you want. You can have it come in. The more it comes in, the more goofy and funny it looks, which is kind of fun. If you ask me, I kind of like it funny and goofy, but that's up to you. I'm gonna leave that up to you. So now, right almost where these two join, just a little bit over, I'm gonna do the other part of my neck. This one has a line to show that it's very strong necks, very veiny. If you wanna do that, you can. You don't have to, but if you want to, you can. Okay? All right, now, nostril. Where is our nostril? Nostrils can be big and flaring, like they're really taking in a lot, like they're, they're running, but this one's delicate and dainty. So let's make sure that we kind of make, it's almost like a backwards comma. So if you're having trouble, start with a circle, and then you can make like a little V, and then that'll be like your nostril right there. So I started with a circle, and then I did a V, okay? Also, now we have to do an I, an I is all I did was a circle and then I did a line above it. But you can use as many different eyes as you want. Eyes are super awesome that way. You can have uh, big eyes, round eyes, so cute eyes, you know. Uh, and then you can also think about eyelashes. I love eyelashes or eyebrows, okay? So you can use your imagination and, and do any kind of eye you want. That adds a lot of character and style to your horse unicorn, okay? Or Pegasus. <gasps> Okay, so for me, I'm gonna be kind of boring today and I'm just gonna do a circle like my other picture. So I'm gonna start with a circle and then I'm just going to draw a line, okay? And for me, I love eyelashes. Did I mention that I love eyelashes? So I'm gonna do some eyelashes. Meow, 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 eyelashes. Okay, now this fella or lady, it's up to you. Um, this is kind of like the rear end of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to kind of draw a line to show that it's kind of like the end of my horse. And you don't have to have it as wide if you don't want to. You can make them shorter. Just don't make them too, too short. And then you can also have like, you know, legs down here. You can have a tail. It's flapping. Maybe there's stars coming out from behind him or he's flying or ooh, wings. Fabulous. Gotta have long, luxurious mane now. Gotta have mane. So this one has a curly cue. Let's make it a little bit easier. I love curly cues, but in case you're like, oh, I can't do that. So let's do, um, I always think like, again, M's, like an M's. So kind of go, wah, 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 wah. okay. And then just make sure you do the back, which means again, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of racing. So I, I like to do little zigzaggy M's. And this one will come around my ear, okay. And then this is gonna come around. And then it's gonna flow to the other side because I'm running out of room. So it's gonna flow to the other side. La 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 la, flowy, see flowy. And if you want to, you can add lines to your unicorn's horn as well. Line, 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 line. And they're kind of curved. Think of them as a smiley face a little bit. They're kind of curved a bit, okay? So they're curved, okay? Does it get any easier than that? I don't think so. I hope I didn't go too fast for you. A lot of triangles, a lot of V's, a lot of circles, a little bit of zhuzh of fun. So color it in how you want to. Remember, when it comes to unicorn's eyes, though, I like to add a little spot of white. I'm gonna hold this a little bit closer to the, the camera. Eyes are made out of water, so if you want them to look really animated and alive, make sure you do a little circle and that'll stay white. No matter how you color in your eyes, whether it's pupil or not, leave that spot white and that'll give it a little extra personality. I hope you had some fun. Oh, I can't wait to hear how you colored this. And I hope that you uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining me. All right, take care.
So I'm going to invite you to take a minute to get your supplies. Your supplies can be as simple as a pencil and a piece of paper. A pencil, a piece of paper. If you have some crayons or markers, you are all set. Pencil, paper, crayon, markers. Um, some of you are artists here, so if you have some watercolors and a little glass of water, that's good too. Um, so we'll get started. We work in our doodling class. We call it doodling. We make it sound like it's not serious at all. But doodling, there's nothing more serious than doodling. It really helps us become grounded. For those of us who also work representationally, doodling is a relaxing time to step back from external observation to really um, focus on ex internal observation. So I'm gonna assume you have your supplies. And you know what? If you don't have supplies, you can use your finger and work in the air. I'm not kidding. If you don't have supplies, whatever I invite you to do, the air is your canvas and you'll use your finger. So before we get started, uh, we're just gonna get grounded with uh, what I call five, four, three, two, one. So I invite you to look around your space and um, identify five things that you see. Five things that you see. I see a tree. I see a clock. I see the floor. I see some, I see all my painting supplies. And I see one of my messy mandalas for messy times. Okay, and how about four things that you hear, four things that you hear. I'm hearing very slightly some cars outside. I'm hearing some static, not static, like the sound of the speaker. I'm hearing my voice, obviously. And I'm actually imagining that I hear the rustle of the leaves, but I don't think I'm actually hearing it. Um, three things that you feel in your body. I feel my sit bones. Marsha reminded me to find them. I feel a little ache in my shoulder. Oh, I feel my feet on the floor. Two things that you smell. smell my coffee. I smell the freshness of the water. And one word, one word that might describe what's helping you through this time. One word. Okay, so take your piece of paper I could show you a lot of doodles that we've done over the years, but we're just, here's an example of a recent one. This is a messy, messy mandala for messy times. But I'm gonna start with a blank paper and I invite you to take your paper or if you're working in the air and to write your word in the center. Write your word in the center. And one of the things that's getting me through this time is really love. So I've just written the word love in the center. And then I invite you to, to take your pencil and you can just do this freehand. Um, and we're gonna do a messy mandala because these are messy times and we need to acknowledge the messiness. I'm just gonna draw a freehand circle around the word and then 
another circle, another circle, just drawing a lot of circles, kind of like a bullseye. I'm not used to drawing sideways, but that makes it even messier. So I'm gonna say that makes it better. So you have, you might decide to change your word. You might decide that what centers you is your favorite pillow. What centers you is helping your, your kitty get ready for school or maybe going for a walk. So yeah, love is one thing, but maybe there's something else I might scribble in there that also helps me stay centered. So I have love at the center. I have a couple of other things written here in the center. They don't all have to be visible. And that's the other thing about doodling meetup. We're not explaining our work to each other. We're not analyzing it. I create a setting and a framework where people are free to have their own space. A lot of what people do in the class is very private and very personal. And so everything is optional. Every invitation is um, an optional one. So I want to add that here as well. If you don't feel like drawing circles around your word and you want to draw rectangles, that's fine. Or if you don't even want to do that, you just want to scribble, that's also fine. That's kind of part of the doodling uh, project is that sometimes just being in the class is a motivator or it creates a setting for doing something. So what I provide is an invitation and the invitation can be interpreted in any way. So here we have what keeps me centered these days. I've got some circles and then I'm going to add, I'm just gonna add lines. I don't even, these can be, well, this, that, that one doesn't work. And here we go. So we have some lines. And I'm drawing the lines through the center. They're pretty messy. I'm not used to totally drawing sideways, but I have to say I'm kind of liking that challenge. Now, now it gets into our messy mandala. We're just gonna add some random, I know you can't see me, I'm bending down to get my materials. Here I am. I'm just taking a, a random gelato. The other thing we do, and in uh, the doodling meetup is I, I share a lot of materials and supplies. I don't like to be fussy about supplies. I think you can make art with pretty much anything. Um, but uh, for those who, who want to develop technique and know more about supplies, I always do a lot of demos and stuff like that. So this happens to be a gelato um, marker. And I'm just going to make random random blobs on my lines. The only thing that's kind of consistent is that I'm putting two blobs on each line. So if you are working at home, not working, I meant playing. If you're playing along with me at home, um, I hope you've, you know, put your word, made your circles, made your lines, and now you're adding some blobs. Now, if you're working in the air, I know that sounds really ridiculous, but um, I'm gonna encourage you <laughs> to do it. Uh, what would that be like working in the air? Well, if I'm in the air, here's my word. I've made my circles. I've made my lines. And now I'm gonna have to sort of remember where my lines are and I'm, putting blobs on each of the lines. Now it gets really fun and intuitive when we, the doodling meetup crowd, we, we're very free. There's always a structure, there's always a plan. I always have, you know, um, an actual uh, technique that we're gonna learn that day, supplies that we're gonna explore that day. We usually have poems too, a poem that will inspire the theme. But today I didn't, the theme is really working intuitively and, and working in a messy way. Um, but then we drift way off of that. And that's really the magic of the doodling meetup. There's always a structure, as anyone who, who teaches knows that you need a structure and then you need to be entirely free to let it go. Um, 
All right, so I have my two blobs on each line. I'm looking at the pink, and I think I need, I need something to contrast the pink, maybe like an analogous color. And because I'm working upright, I can't work in the drippy way that I like. So I'm just gonna take this little tube of Liquitex and, um, and I'm not gonna water it down. I'm just gonna squeeze it and see if I can connect some of these blobs. Blob is technical term in messy mandala. Yeah, we actually had a lot of problem with our internet a couple weeks ago, and it turned out there was water in all the wires outside. Comcast came, spent four hours, and we have been excellent since. All right, so we've got the blobs. We've connected some of the blobs with the green. Um, if you are working at home, um, so now I think I want to connect the bottom two blobs and then put a triangle to the green line. Let's see if I can do that consistently across. I don't know. Um, now there's, what happens here, if you want to know the neuroscience about it, the brain is very happy to have this repetition and the challenge of um, taking, you know, the exact same, if you will, assignment, two blobs and a triangle. And every time you encounter two different blobs, they're in a slightly different location. Um, so as random as this all looks, there's some very relaxing action going on. All right, I'm looking at my messy mandala and I definitely need, I definitely need some yellow um, or something resembling yellow. And if you are working at home with just pencil and paper, you can do all different kind of lines. You can do jagged lines, you can use dotty lines, you can use interrupting lines. If you're working in the air, I know that does sound ridiculous, but if you are working in the air, you're gonna color all, you're gonna scribble all around your circle. And if you finish scribbling around one, you know, your circle with your right hand, how about you use your left hand and in the air, do that also in the circle. Um, I think I feel like I need some botanicals here. I definitely need some kind of flower in this middle. And I might decide at some point, whoa, <laughs> okay. Yeah, you get a little messy with stuff here. I might decide, you know, after I color in my petals, my messy petals, the awesome thing about messy is you might decide when you're done, you know, I don't like it so messy. And then, then some real magic happens. Um, because you can cover things up. So if you, you know, if you're working, playing with your messy mandala and it's like, oh, you know, I don't really like that color after all. Well, that's why you have, um, that's why you have white. So you, you can cover things with white very easily, let them dry, um, and then you can start again. But I always encourage folks in my class to just work with what you have. If you don't like something, you know, that always comes up. It's like, oh, I don't like that. That's ugly. That's stupid. That's childish. And you know what? That's fine. We have... I always, you know, for folks that are new to the class, the people that have been playing around with me for years, they know this already. So I try to say it in a different way each time. But, you know, we might have six or seven people in the class. I said, it looks like there's only six or seven people in the class, but there's actually about 12 or 14. And people are like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah, because each of us has an inner critic. 
and that inner critic is sitting right next to you telling you oh that's not any good that's kind of silly why are you bothering you should be home doing something useful and so we really do spend time you know um figuring out how to deal with the inner critic and the inner critic is a real thing especially for those of us who've been making art a long time and sometimes you just have to um and tell the inner critic to go sit over there in a chair, give them a book, give them something to do, and tell them to leave you alone. So you can be really nice to the inner critic, or you can just say, you know, enough already, just go. And we do have a lot of, um, we have kind of heartfelt discussions. They're just very spontaneous, heartfelt discussions about creativity, and promoting creativity. And one thing that everyone knows if they've played around with me long enough is that um, it's not only that I believe everyone is creative, but it's actually true. Like it doesn't matter whether I believe it or not. And it doesn't matter, um, you know. So we don't talk a lot of theory, but if people want the theory, I've got it ready. We just play around. So I think I'm gonna just wrap this up for the moment. Um, and what we would normally do in our class is, you know, after, you know, people have had a chance to, uh, you know, to play around and we, we walk around, we share our work. I invite people to take a minute on the back to answer possibly three questions. Um, describe what you did. You know, oh, I wrote, I wrote a word, I put circles around it. I Like whatever it is, it sounds very pedestrian, but it's very grounding. You know, what did you do? And then um, what did you feel like? How did you feel? Oh, I felt it was stupid. I felt it was silly. Oh, I felt it was great. I felt like a kid. I felt so free, whatever it was. What were you thinking? Oh, I was thinking about, I got to do the laundry. Oh, I was thinking how much fun this is. I was thinking, man, I wish I could do this all the time. Oh, I'm, I was thinking I wish I could quit my job or I wish I hadn't lost my job. And none of that is shared. And I tell people, I'm gonna give you three questions. They're just for you. We're not sharing this, this is for you. And then I invite folks to, to give their piece a name and to sign it and put a date on it. And I said, it, you know, you might decide three weeks from now to take it, tear it up and use it in collage. That's fine. Or you might decide, you know, to throw it out. That's also fine. But if you're going to throw it out, I always tell people, save everything for a couple of months before you throw it out. Because a couple of months later, you might say, ooh, that's going to be nice in collage. Now, something I'm going to do, because there is some wet paint on here, and then I'm going to wrap up because I'm mindful of our time. Um, there is some wet paint. So let's see what happens if I fold this over. And then... Um, I get my my brayer and this is called a mono print so that's a technical art term and um, you know it's not um, it didn't do anything like crazy interesting but because we didn't have a lot of wet spots but it did it did its job which is you know now we've got some mirror images mixing up with our messy mandala I'm going to finish by showing you three more messy mandalas from the past week because messy times require messy mandalas. So here's a messy mandala. This one's more like a messy spiral. Messy spiral. That was fun. I did that after a work meeting. I needed a little little decompression. Here's a messy mandala from last week. I worked a lot with wet ink. So wet ink is really, it kind of puffs up a little bit. So that's kind of cool. And one more I'm going to show you. I guess this is the one I showed you in the beginning. Connecting the blobs. And I think I'm going to stop there.
I did the two workshops and I love them. I think now I can actually draw a unicorn because <laughs> before. And uh, you know, the doodling class was very relaxing. I had my cup of tea with me and uh, you know, I could just let my creative juices flow very brightly. So I think everybody you know, out there who did the workshops, please reach out, write back to us and sign up for more classes at the West Windsor Arts Council. You know, they need us just as much as we need them. So create and breathe. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you so much. Thank you, Spriha.